Good morning. We're going to begin our service today by singing together a Christmas carol. We'll be visiting a lot of those this morning. Uh, but the first one that we're going to sing together is Joy to the World. We're going to sing all four verses. Let's stand as we sing. Words are on the screens. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to Savior reigns. Let all their songs imply. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and songs nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love thank you you may be seated Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see each and every one of you here. Uh, thanks to all those who helped with the church Advent decorations last Sunday. Everything looks beautiful. Those who would like, uh, those who would like, are encouraged to bring an angel ornament for the lobby Christmas tree this year. Be sure to add your name to the ornament if you want the ornament back after Christmas. We have a produce drop this uh, week, Tuesday at 10:30. Volunteer helpers are needed and appreciated. Wednesday night activities resume this week. Bring a side dish for the dinner time. Red Cross Blood Drive hosted by the church on December 6th from 10 until 3. Sign up information available on the church website. The children's department is sponsoring an elf hunt, Parents Night Out on December 17th. More information and sign up are available on the church website. And we appreciate your faithfulness in making use of the offering plates available at each doorway. Thank you. Good morning. Is it appropriate to say Merry Christmas yet? Or do we need to wait a little bit further? Merry Christmas, let's try it first time. There we go. I've been waiting to say that for a while. Uh, this morning... Um, the ministry moment is a little bit different. In the past, I've announced more specific events, and this morning, I kind of wanted to give more of just a broad encouragement. Uh, as we get more and more into the Advent and Christmas season, we know that it is a time where we spend a lot of time with family, and it's a time where a lot of giving goes on. Uh, many people name Christmas as the seasons of giving, and the encouragement and the reminder that I wanted to provide this morning is to offer a sense of encouragement as far as lending ourselves to helping serve and to helping others who aren't necessarily in as beneficial a position as we might be. I was looking this morning online um, at some statistics and I came across some census data that reminded me that almost 20 percent of our county lives below the poverty line. And of our neighboring city, Gadsden, that percentage is up to almost 30%. And it reminded me that 
A lot of times in my life, I have taken the season of giving in a very selfish way. And I think only about the gifts that I receive or the gifts that I give to my family members. But the encouragement that I wanted to share this morning is I think that the season of giving extends outside of that. And I know here at the church, we'll have opportunities this season to help those in our community that are not as fortunate, that have come into hard times, that need a little boost around the holidays. And my encouragement is that we all as a community, as a congregation, as a people, that we can come together and search for those opportunities even when they're not necessarily out of this place. I know there are opportunities around us in our local and civic community to get out and to serve and to help those who are struggling this season, either financially or emotionally. And it's my encouragement that we are able to help with that this season. I know that we uh, are very busy and that we have a lot of hustle and bustle that goes on, but I do think that it is important that we take as much opportunity as we can to help those who might need a little bit of help experiencing what Christmas can be and what Christmas promises for all of us. So that's my encouragement for us this morning as we continue our time of worship. Thank you, Mitchell. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. First two verses and the last one. Yes, you get to stand again. You sing so much better when you're standing. You may be seated. As Jeff's coming up, let me mention that you've probably noticed the beautiful flowers up here at the front, and those are uh, left by the Cotret family, and we continue to remember that family in our prayers as Bob was uh, laid to rest this week. Thank you. This morning, our scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians 3, 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with humble hearts. Lord, we come to you giving you our thanks and praise. Lord, we thank you for this Advent season. 
we thank you most importantly for what this Advent season means to us as Christians. Lord, we just uh, lift up those that are hurting, those that are less fortunate. And God, I just pray that this season you would open our eyes and our hearts to those that are in need. Father, just uh, be with us throughout the rest of this worship service. We ask all this in our precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just going to use this microphone right here. So last week I was telling you we get to start a new year. We get, we get a do-over, start again. I was just thinking about that game last night. Did any of you catch the game last night? <laughs> oh, okay. A few of you did. Yeah, I see. Well, I was just thinking about the game, and I was thinking about how hard we fight. And one of the things I was talking to Mitchell about this morning was how hard we fight. And sometimes as we get older, we kind of take the safety route. We don't, we don't fight as hard as we used to. And I, I think that's, that's partially because we get a little, you know, tired or a little bit sore when we get up in the morning, whatever it might be. But, you know, this year I was just thinking if we could just all fight for Christ the way Auburn and Alabama fought that last quarter, then we would be just fine, wouldn't we? I think that's the battle we need to be in. Not willing to give. Not willing to give up, not willing to give in. But just to fight for Christ this whole next year. So as we begin this Christian year, we, we also celebrate the holy season of Advent. It is the time when we prepare ourselves for the, for the coming of the Messiah, the Son of God, the King of Kings, our, our high priest forever. Thus, Advent means coming. We're waiting for the coming. We celebrate these days of Advent in expectation, in preparation for Christ's arrival as, as the baby. Through the centuries, Christians have observed the time of waiting and expectation before celebrating the birth of our Savior at Christmas. Now, the Advent season is a time for a joyful reflection um, and preparation. Advent has been enriched by a great cloud of Christian witnesses over time to reflect a very distinctive Christian meaning. It proclaims the revelation of God's love expressed in Christ's birth in a humble stable. As we enter this new Christian year, let us all make room for Christ, our King. Today, let's prepare a room for Jesus the Christ in our own hearts, not just in our own hearts, but in our own lives, in our own homes, as well as here. Lord God, now I ask you to bless these physical symbols that are around us, and you're going to hear about many of them today. May these physical symbols that, that we're talking about this morning be blessed in a way to help us understand that they represent something very supernatural. God among us. God with us. May we see that event, that event which changed the entire world and changed our relationships with God. May that be so in the name of the Father, in and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The most striking and the most universal feature of Christmas is the use of evergreens in churches and homes. Among ancient Romans, evergreens were the emblem of peace, joy, and victory. The early Christians placed them in their windows to indicate that Christ has entered their home. Holly and ivy, along with pine and fir, are called evergreens because they never change color. They symbolize the unchanging nature of God, and they remind us of everlasting life that is ours in Jesus Christ. 
Under Christian thought and sentiment, holly became widely used in church celebrations. Holly is considered as a burning bush or a symbol of Mary who's being glows with the Holy Spirit. The red berries represented the blood drops from the cruel thorns in the crown of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 13, we find these words, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto you, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of your sanctuary. Our forefathers called the procuring of these evergreens bringing home Christmas. Please remain seating and join in singing a verse from Deck the Halls. <laughs> Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. Today, the chrismon tree is the center of our festivities. Glittering with lights and chrismons, it is part of the beauty and meaning of Christmas. The first use of the Christmas tree was in medieval German paradise plays held outdoors and portraying the creation of humankind. The tree of life was a fir tree decorated with apples. Later, other ornaments were hung upon the tree at Christmas was established. Martin Luther was perhaps one of the first to use a lighted tree. Chrismon is a combination of two words, Christ and monogram, and is a monogram or symbol for Christ. Only white and gold materials are used in making chrismons. White is for purity and gold is for the majesty and glory of our God and our Lord. Please remain seated as we sing the first verse of Silent Night. In the early part of the 19th century, the first United States ambassador to Mexico, Joel Robert Poinsett, admired the dramatic beauty of the bright red poinsettias that grew rooftop high and bloomed profusely throughout Mexico during the Christmas season. He brought cuttings of the plant back to the United States. What astounded him even more were the stories that the Mexican Christians told of why the bright red poinsettias were part of the birth and celebration and life of Christ. The Bethlehem star showed over the manger where Jesus was born. Its light was so bright that the earth responded, reflecting the starlight throughout the beautiful flower. Star-shaped, radiant-shaped, pure white petals, golden star centers. In Mexican lore, it was always known as Flores de Noche Buena, the flower of the holy night. It grew on earth as a creation to glorify and commemorate that holy night. Then came the tragic day when Jesus died on the cross. The flower's blooms, blooms changed. Pure white petals remembered the sacrifice of the one born where the star was over Bethlehem and they turned red. Please remain seated as we sing one verse of There's a Song in the Air. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's 
there's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry and the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of bethlehem cradles a king art has been an important way to communicate the christian faith Colors, altar pyramids, or coverings, and banners are some of the most important ways that Christians have used artistic expression through worship to tell of Jesus. In the early days of Christian worship, Advent and Christmas were somber times, much like Lent is in the modern church. Purple table coverings were used to speak of Jesus' kingship, but the mood was much more somber. As Christians began to share their celebration of, of Christmas with non-Christian neighbors, they began to focus more on the joy of Advent and Christmas. As the emphasis of Christmas changed to joy and celebration, the color used also changed to express Christ's lordship in a more happy way. While purple is still used in some churches, many churches like Christ Central use blue to speak of the kingship of Jesus. At Advent, we wait with anticipation and celebration for our coming Christ. Please remain seated as we sing one verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. candle the advent candle the advent is a time of expectation is symbolized not only by the four week period of preparation but also by the lighting of the advent candle on each sunday of the season the flame of each new candle reminds us that something is happening and there's still more to come the candles of the wreath are arranged in a circle reminding us of the continuous power of god which no, knows neither beginning nor ending there's also symbolism of the color of the candles the three blue candles symbolize the coming of Christ from the royal line of David. His coming as a king, a king of kings as well as the prince of peace. The pink candle is lighted, lighted on the fourth Sunday of Advent. The candle represents joy. The large white candle in the center is known as the Christ candle and points to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. A progression is noted with the lighting of the Advent wreath each Sunday. Each candle symbolizes various aspects, aspects of our waiting experience. This year, we remember the traditional themes of the Advent experience, hope, guidance, peace, and joy. The culmination of the season comes as we light the Christ candle on Christmas Eve. We join in the rejoicing of that promise of long ago being fulfilled. Now the Ford family will come light the candle of the Advent wreath. As we prepare to light the first Advent candle, our scripture reading comes from the 60th chapter of Isaiah, verses 2 and 3. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. 
May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Christmas joy naturally overflows into music. About the fourth century AD, bells first pealed forth in glad song at Christmas. Of all of our Christmas symbols, the bells have experienced the fewest changes. Medieval people had a tender feeling for church bells, which have gladdened the heart of the people throughout the ages. Bells have rung out the good news of Christmas through the Emperor Bell in Moscow, the Great Bell in China in Peking, Big Ben's Bell in London, and the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. However, it is the church bells of every community that have found their ways into, the, into each of our hearts. The candy maker in Indiana wanted to make a candy that would be a witness, so he made the candy cane to represent the birth, ministry, and death of Jesus. He began with a stick of pure white hard candy. White symbolized the virgin birth and sinless nature of Jesus. The hardness symbolized the solid rock, the foundation of the church, and the firmness of the promises of God. The cane was shaped in the form of a J to represent the name of Jesus. The J shape could also represent the staff of the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd uses his staff to reach down into the ditches of the world to lift out the fallen lambs who have gone astray. Thinking that the candy was somewhat plain, the candy maker stained it with red stripes. He used three small stripes to show the scourging that Jesus received by which we are healed. The large red stripe was for the bloodshed that, by Christ on the cross. The candy cane had become a meaningless decoration seen at Christmas time, but the true meaning is still there for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. You are invited to sing a verse from Go Tell It on the Mountain. Jesus Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain. Over Jesus Christ is born. Amen. On Christmas night, all Christians sing to tell the news that the angels bring. So says an old carol. Many traditional carols were composed between 1400 and 1700. In the 18th century, town watchmen carried tunes from door to door, lighting their lanterns and playing instruments. Later, town musicians who played for processions and civic occasions walked the streets and were rewarded by households wait, waiting outside the homes where they played. Let us stand together and sing a first verse of several familiar favorites, starting with a May in a Manger. Jesus, 
asleep on the hay. Oh, come all ye faithful. be seated. Thank you, Dave. I was just flashed back to being, I must have been 10, 11 years old. I was living in a community that we just moved into and the kids that I was playing with normally every day, you know what it used to be like. You know, mom, dad drop kick you out the door and say, come on back for dinner, you know. And we were out playing, and the kids that I was with, it was Christmas time, and they had, um, they had been used to just, you know, gathering together and walking and knocking on doors and singing a carol and getting some cookies and whatever, you know. And sometimes a quarter or two, or that was one of the things that they did. And I was thinking, you know, I was one of the Catholics that made it to church a couple of times a year, you know, and um, I didn't know any of the hymns, not a one of them. And when we were singing those this time, I was thinking, it would have been nice to know that when I was little and I was walking around with them trying to sing those, <laughs> sing those hymns, you know. And I know I would, we would be going to a door and those guys would be looking at me like, don't you even know Silent Night? What's wrong with you? I don't know, reminded me of that, had to share it with you. The word Christmas itself comes from an early church combination of Christ and Mass. And, and the church originally celebrated the birth of Christ through worship and Holy Communion, thus the word Mass, of course. Um, in fact, the commercialism that we see nowadays, uh, that we experience as a part of our celebration, that was not part of the Christmas celebration when it first began. 
It, it was simply about centering on and remembering Christ's birth. The, the word was proclaimed. The, the great Thanksgiving was celebrated. Uh, and, and, and this season, we're going to have at least three opportunities this month to do communion. We'll do communion today. We'll do communion again on, um, on the 1st, and then we will do it again on Christmas Eve. Now, that's plenty of opportunity to recenter our lives on Christ, isn't it? And I thought about not doing it next week, but you know what? I'm the type of person that believes you need to take every opportunity you can. Every opportunity you can. So I'm just going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Uh, in fact, Christmas Eve communion was started in an early church as a, as a vigil to prepare for Christmas Day. A mass was celebrated at midnight in preparation for remembering Christ's birth. I still remember going to those midnight masses. Of course, it was a little different. I was Catholic, you know, so that was one of the only times of the year that I went to church, even. Today, we begin our Advent season with Holy Communion. As we look to this season of waiting and readying ourselves for the Christ child to be born in our hearts once again, we remember what this baby born in Bethlehem would truly mean in our lives. Freedom. Forgiveness. Redemption. This baby would be the savior of the world, giving his body to a broken world and shedding his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And that, brothers and sisters in Christ, is what we remember as we do this season of Advent. Now this morning, we actually have some, some bread, some real bread, and the little juice cups. For those of you who are comfortable with it, the people that are going to come up and serve have washed their hands and they're going to put gloves on, and they will give you the cup and the bread, okay, to make sure that we keep down in any germs. For those of you that are not comfortable with that, we do have a few cups. You know, those little individual cups with the bread in them up here. And you can ask for one of those also. Could I have those that are going to help this morning come up? David, if you'll lift the cup and the bread when I talk about it. Everybody ready? Great. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. So take a moment, bow your heads. If there is anything that is keeping you from a good relationship with God through Jesus Christ or a good relationship with others, now is the time to lay that at the feet of Jesus Christ. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, when the supper was over with, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes at final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Would you please stand and receive this benediction? What a joy it is to be with you at the beginning of a Christian year. I'm so grateful that you're here. I, I do want to share my joy with you. I got to hold my great-grandbaby Friday, and I think it was like Mommy, Pam, Mark, Grandma. Mommy, Pam, Mark, Grandma. We just kept passing that little boy around. And so my joy, I, my cup is full. My joy runs over. And may that be part of your Christmas season. May your joy run over. As you experience not just your own family, but as you experience your larger Christian family, too, may your joy flow over. I pray that Christ is in every moment of your time. I praise to your right and your left, above you, underneath you, in front of you, and behind you. I pray that he's, he's when you get up in the morning, he's with you. When you go to sleep at night, he's with you. I pray he's in every moment of your time, everywhere you are. And I pray you hear him in there. You feel him in there. But I don't want you to keep him to yourself. Christ wants to be shared, so please do share them. May that be so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, everyone.